So welcome to this tutorial on establishing whether or not a precipitate is going to form by analyzing both the QSP and the KSP of that potential precipitate. Let's get started by going right into the problem. We have a solution of calcium nitrate being added to a solution of sodium fluoride. We have concentrations and volumes for both and we're trying to establish whether or not a precipitate is going to form. Well, the first thing that we need to do, like we have to do with just about every other type of equilibrium problem, is we have to start with a balanced chemical equation. Now, what you're going to notice here is that it has a unidirectional arrow. This isn't actually where the equilibrium lies. You will notice that this unidirectional arrow indicates that these two aqueous solutions combine completely, or more accurately, dissociate into ions completely, and that the mixture of those ions could potentially form a solid of, in this case, calcium fluoride. So because calcium fluoride is our potential precipitate here, that is the solid that we're going to analyze, this is where our equilibrium expression starts. So here is the equilibrium equation that we're going to use to help us analyze this particular question. Now again, we don't actually know whether or not this equilibrium is going to occur because we don't know if the concentration of the calcium ions and the fluoride ions is actually high enough in order for that precipitate or that solid to form. So we are not calculating in this case the KSP, rather we are determining the QSP. And much like we used KC and QC, what we are doing here is we are trying to establish if we are at equilibrium. Our next task then is to figure out what the concentration of calcium ions and fluoride ions are at this point. Now, this question is a little bit tricky because you will notice that both of these volumes are fairly significant. That is, if we add 10 milliliters to 20 milliliters, the uh, total volume of this particular mixture being 30 milliliters is going to impact the concentration of any ions that we have in that reaction mixture. The other thing that we have to understand is that calcium nitrate dissociates in a one-to-one -one ratio with calcium ions. For every calcium nitrate that dissociates, we're going to get one calcium ion and two nitrate ions. So we know that the concentration of calcium nitrate is going to be equal to the concentration of the calcium ion. So in knowing this, and knowing that our total volume is going to be the sum of the two individual volumes, I'm going to combine a number of steps into one just to make our calculations a little bit more concise. So what I'm going to be doing is calculating the number of moles of this particular compound initially over the total volume. Or another way of writing that would be since the number of moles equals C times V, I'm going to take the initial concentration times the initial volume and divide that by the total volume of the reaction mixture. Now it should be noted that the initial number of moles is also going to be the final number of moles because the number of moles of the calcium ion is not actually changing. The concentration is, but the number of moles does not change itself once we mix those two things together, at least not initially. So when we take a look here, we have the initial concentration of our calcium nitrate which is 2.5 times 10 to the negative 3 moles per liter. I have my initial volume, which is 10 milliliters, and we have our total volume, that is the volume of the two solutions when mixed together, of 0 0.0300 liters or 30 milliliters. Now we will notice that these liters divide out and they are going to leave us with concentration, which is what we want for this, and we are going to get a concentration of calcium ions of 8.3 times 10 to the negative 4 moles per liter. So this represents the concentration of calcium ions. And again, just very quickly, if we take a look at this, this is equal to the number of moles of calcium nitrate and therefore the number of moles of calcium ions that we have in the initial sample but also in the reaction mixture. Its concentration changes. It's actually going to be a third of its original concentration because we have a 10 to 30 or a 1 to 3 ratio that we have ultimately diluted this by mixing it with the other solution. And so as a result, we have a lower concentration, which again makes sense because we have the same number of calcium ions in a larger volume of solution. The sodium fluoride concentration is going to be equal to the concentration of the fluoride ions, again because of that dissociation into a one-to-one -one ratio, that is one fluoride ion for every sodium fluoride that dissociates. We are going to calculate this by taking the initial concentration of that solution, multiplying it by the initial volume, and dividing by the total volume of the reaction mixture, that is the mixture of the sodium fluoride solution and the calcium nitrate solution. The concentration that I have initially is 1 decimal 0 times 10 to the negative 4 moles per liter. 
we're multiplying that by our initial volume and then ultimately by our combined or total volume. And in doing so, we get a concentration of 6.7 times 10 to the negative 5 moles per liter. So now we can take these values and put them into our QSP so that we can compare it ultimately to our KSP. So you may remember the QSP as above is the calcium ion concentration, so that's the first one that I'm going to put in there, 8.3 times 10 to the negative 4. I'm going to put in the fluoride ion concentration of 6.7 times 10 to the negative 5. Remember, we have to square that. And in doing so, we will ultimately arrive at a value of 3.7 times 10 to the negative 12. Again, you'll notice that I didn't put units in there. I guess arguably we could derive units, but we treat these equilibrium constants and reaction quotients as effectively being dimensionless, as we are going to do here. So here we have 3.7 times 10 to the negative 12. That's an extremely low number, but we're going to find for most of these solubilities, their KSPs are extremely low. So what we have to do now is we have to look up the value for KSP in order to compare that to the QSP. And the KSP at this particular point for calcium fluoride is 3.2 times 10 to the negative 11. As we can see here, it is larger than the QSP. And so we can say that therefore, no precipitate will form. So at this point, the QSP is too low. That is, the concentration of the calcium ions and the fluoride ions aren't sufficient in order for there to be a precipitate. That is, the solution at this point can hold or accommodate that concentration of calcium ion and fluoride ion before a precipitate would ultimately form. So hopefully after watching this video, you have a better understanding of how we can actually use concentrations of particular solutions to establish whether or not a precipitate's gonna form, not just simply based on a qualitative analysis using a solubility table, but actively using the values and comparing them to the KSP to establish whether or not a precipitate will actually form with those concentrations of ions. Thanks for watching.